friends, welcome back to the Film Alchemist Podcast, the show where we take the movies we love, break them apart, to find out what gives them their magic. I'm your host, Josh Griffey, here for the October magic, the horror magic, the infinite abyss of the October mega marathon magic. Joined, as always, on this journey by my friend, co-host, and guy with a crippling skin disease, Alex Dandino. I actually have psoriasis, so that makes sense. Oh my god. Well, little do Andy's big. So now hey, we know the future. Let me see if I can get the sound right. <laughs> it's kind of like a cat if you like slowly were entering it. I, I have a story about that when we get to this part. About entering a cat slowly. Jesus Sage. You heard it here for here for, you're not gonna want to miss this episode. The All right, sound guys. effect. Let's go. It's official. We're crushing our way through the Texas Chainsaw Massacre here to open the franchise uh, segment of our October Mega Marathon. Today we are rebooting, but before we reboot, we got to do some business. People, we're on Patreon. That's right, patreon.com slash Pod. Guys, please help us support the show. Please grow the show. We work hard for you. This helps us keep it going, grow it up. Get it mm -hmm. out. All mm -hmm. the good stuff uh, your support does over there. We have a lot of awesome supporters over there. In fact, this this month, to get all 31 episodes and not a measly 28 free episodes, you want to go to patreon.com slash Pod. Our patrons selected the horror movie exclusives they wanted for this month. Uh, we also have a commentary over there, feature-length commentary we do every month. You can get access to that. If you don't think that 31 episodes is enough, we also have our Tales from the Griff miniseries that you can find over there and enjoy as well. Rewatch Tales from the Crypt between watching hundreds of horror movies. It's the greatest time of the year. So again, that's patreon.com slash Pod. Please, 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 if you can, support the show over there. YouTube Film Alchemist, go watch us over there. Those are things. Email filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. We're on yep. all the socials, the 800 socials. We're not on Blue Sky. I'll say that. Are we not? I don't, I can't even keep track anymore. We're not. You also get to join us on Discord if you're a patron. We love it over there. We have a great little community over there. Uh, uh, so make sure you're leaving five-star ratings and reviews everywhere. Also, especially this month, guys, send an episode to a friend, a movie-loving, especially a horror movie-loving friend. Let them know that we're at the beginning stages of the Horror Mega Marathon and let them jump in and join with us. You guys can find the schedule posted everywhere. Patrons, you know where it is. Uh, everyone else, it's on the socials. If you can't find it, email the show, filmalchemistpod at gmail.com. We'll send you the graphic with all the social or all the schedule information. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a good one mm -hmm. this year, guys. You're going to want to be in on this. Quality. You're going to want to be action. in. Five years ago, two fat fucks decided to talk about horror movies all month. Is it? Not not just a couple horror movies. Don't interrupt my police evidence, please. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, I was trying to do the... So while you were doing it. Yeah. All right. Clear the channel. Back to one. <laughs> Five years ago. Back to, one. back to one. Clear the channel again. Yeah. Five years ago, two giant fat fucks decided they would talk about 31 horror movies every day in October. And their their fucking dumb bodies said that they would cover entire franchises, not in one episode, but every single entry. And here they go finding themselves today talking about every single Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. We did food trucks. We did government conspiracies. We did Leatherface as jerking off Looney Tune. We had enough. It was the year uh, 2003. It was time for a reboot. We had already Woodstock 99. There was angry, young, cargo-shorted man energy overwhelming yeah. the culture. A lot of limp biscuit no action. Long, yeah, you could no longer get away with these cutesy leather faces, right? The Kim Hinkle, uh, you know, kind of wailing leather face, trying on outfits. This was not going to work anymore. The studios decided we needed to reboot. So they took out all of the interesting, weird decisions that Texas Chainsaw had made. And replaced it with a bippy top. Yeah. Grimy. Jessica Biel. Gritty. Sweaty. Dust covered. Uh, Leatherface could have just slotted into the Royal Rumble. Just a fucking massive monstrosity, right? 
uh, you see the fucking salmonella on every surface in this movie. Let's put it that way. This is gross. This is grimy. It's not quite torture porn e, but it has the same. It has the same visual palette. Yeah, yeah. But it's this adjacent. one, honestly, I'm gonna say I really like the reboot. The reboot does not capture a lot of the magic of what made the first one. And again, this is the common denominator of the Texas Chainsaw franchise is that they're all chasing that magic that made the first one what it is. And even if they do large segments of their movies better or fix a thing here or there, they never capture the magic. So while this doesn't have the magic, this has the fucking bone crunching intensity that I think a lot of people were excited to experience again. Uh, this this new trilogy, essentially, mm-hmm. that'll end at Texas Chainsaw 3D. This is the pro wrestler versus insanely fucking hot children segment of the, the franchise. Uh-huh, yeah. We get Arlie Emery coming out and just fucking doing his, his awesome routine. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's just a lot I like in this reboot, right? Uh, Jessica Biel has obviously become iconic in her half a shirt. <laughs> They're like... Hey, what if on a super hot Texas day it just starts raining and then it's really cold and then it rains on her some more? It's like, all right, guys. What she wearing the whole time? Me. Bippy top and jeans. Well, all right, yeah. Yeah, I'm in. It's kind of like a wife beater, but we're gonna tie it up in the front. Sorry, tank top. We don't say that anymore. But this is something I've had to learn because that's what it was called my whole life, and now it's not. And I mm-hmm. I wear those now because I'm chubby, and it catches sweat. So it's a nice mm. thing to have. Also, you can tuck it in. So, like, if you're doing jumping jacks, you know, in the Starbucks, you're fat. That's, like, that's never happened. We see that here uh, guys, let's just start it off. Alex, opening thoughts on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's funny. This whole era. I'm of, Casey um, Kasem. <laughs> I have a whole Casey Kasem story, by the way, that is like one of my was one of my all time favorite not never produced SNL sketches. Was a Casey Kasem bit that uh, oh Bill the Bill Hader, Hader thing <laughs> might be one of the greatest. Like I was it's like me. the fact that that bomb it's is me, embarrassing. Jimmy Kasem, <laughs> it's <laughs> me, J C Kasem. <laughs> Said right, I not, wouldn't. We're not doing SNL on author us. So <laughs> no, your sorry. thoughts on the Chainsaw Massacre? Yeah. So um, it's interesting because to me this is an era of like movie making, like probably two thousand two to two thousand eight, mm-hmm. where like anything that was sort of remade. Or made in the guise of like a like all timer franchise like this. Let me or... set the stage real quick. So this was the era where we see the rise of torture porn really big. Yeah, this was mm-hmm. like in a post hostile Saul world, yeah. uh, rebooting classic franchises, but with like real gritty, tough like torture porn aesthetics mm-hmm. and the remakes of Asian horror ghost stories. That was yeah. kind of this era. That's sort of the era. So to me. The, the term gritty is a misnomer, in my opinion. And I don't find the whatever grit there is to be found in this movie particularly. Because I liken it because Marcus Nespel directed this and he also did the um, Friday the 13th remake. Also directed three of the CNC Music Factory music videos early in his career. As Hell well yeah. as Spice Up Your Life by the Spice Girls. So Love that. If, you know, he's just... Oh, and I swear by All for One, also in his oeuvre. Damn, I love that. I swear. I swear. This guy's I got was, this guy's I got, was way more All for One hits. than Boys to Men myself. They had a track called Da Bomb. Oh, baby, you're the bomb. Is it because they all wore so, Is it because they all wore glasses? This was like a big thing. Like... I, no, I'm not saying it was a vis- it was a it was a purely on the on the notated music page is where nice. it was. Nice. Okay, fair enough. That's good. Neither here nor there. Um, no, there but there? to me, this is the thing that I have. Well, no, there was like gritty '70s like indie movie, and it was because they weren't shooting with enough light and all that all the time. Well, this this, this for a Texas Chainsaw movie problem, is so fucking polished. Like while it looks yes. awesome, and they art the depart they art department the hell out of it. It I mean, looks it's like polished. A set. It's, it's, all, it's all sets and set pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think the concept of, because I know what you're talking about, like, but I think that's the, uh, the further we get into the 2000s and stuff like that, especially once things get rebooted, is one of those things. Because this movie, okay, this movie is supposed to take place in 1973 because it is a reboot. You're right. supposed to just get the story again as it happened yeah. in 1973. 
you could have said that this movie took place in 2003. I'm like, eh, that makes sense. Dude, I would that, not have of, been able to none tell. None of these people look like 70s. Like, people in the 70s <laughs> were not like this. They didn't have these fucking, you know, LA Inc- fitness memberships, right? People, they didn't have these incredible cheekbones yeah, or if you anything. Go, there's a great thing I used to follow, and it was Teenagers in the 70s, I think it was called. And those dudes look like men already coming out. They were, they were already like fucking 4,000 cigarettes yeah. in. And like, I'm going to tell you the no two things. <laughs> like Eric Balfour and Jonathan Tucker, who play. Uh, I had a tussle uh, with Eric Balfour once, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I know. We've, have yeah. we talked about that? I think we've talked about that on the show. Me and Eric Balfour before. got gotten a little little pushy match at a bar. Yeah. <laughs> right on Sunset so, Boulevard. <laughs> Eric Balfour and Jonathan Tucker, who plays... Do uh, you think he saw me and he's like, that guy's like Leatherface, I'm afraid. He had a flash, think, a PTSD. I think, he, I think he saw you and he was like, oh, wow, that guy was like... That guy looks like that guy who was in a movie that I wish I was in, but I'm not in. Um, he probably he, he saw Leatherface flashbacks. Eric Balfour is just one of those guys who looks like he is from the 90s or the 2000s, yeah. so it's like really hard... To place people, he, he's in like ridiculous. He's like almost like cartoon. Because this is what I said: it's like this looks like the cast of a CW show, right? Well, like J- Jonathan Tucker, who plays Morgan, for instance. Jonathan Tucker is like famously before he like did movies like this, because like later in his career, he started doing much more serious stuff where he was like a psychopath and a lot of stuff. Um, he sort of went the way Ben Foster did, because Ben Foster started his career as like a plucky kid in like ABC shows and then went and did more serious drama. And he became like, you know, he's a really good, like utility character actor. Jonathan Tucker did the same thing where he started his career as like kind of the, the dorky kid. This is like him. So he's the dorky one in the van, but he just has this like wispy mustache that you're like, Oh, see seventies. I think that's the problem for me with the 2003 reboot of Texas Chainsaw Massacre is Everything is like pointing a finger. Look, see, it's the seventies. Look, it's the seventies. See, it's the seventies. See that thing right there? That makes it the seventies. Like, we like Skinnerd. It's like, yeah, come on, man. Like they're like, oh man, they gotta play. They gotta play Freebird. I'm like, I absolutely want to turn this off right now. These people are excited to go watch watch fucking Leonard Skinner play Freebird. I will first turn off, this fucking first off. No, everyone turn- on Earth. That Love was the Leonard one Skinner. I was like, I will absolutely Wait, turn this movie off. Pause the fucking podcast right now or I'll turn it off. You are fucking denigrating Leonard Skinner as a band. I'm denigrating Freebird as a song. That's what I'm denigrating. How absolutely. fucking dare you? Boo. Pass this is forever. like when Wayne's World did the like no stairway joke and people use that to say stairway was not an absolute masterpiece. Freebird uh, is one of the greatest songs. Freebird is absolutely not a masterpiece. Sorry. Just. Now you're the fucking leather face for Pitchfork, you fucking turd. I, I, I'll tell you right now, I'll absolutely be leather face for Pitchfork. Yeah, yeah like the overrated. Bleh, bleh, bleh. How, Neither here nor there. No, actually, right. but legitimately, I'm that's with the what super a, hot teens. I guess I'm. A, but I'm that's a what it. Fan. But to me, that's like one of those things of like pointing. Look, it's from a different era. Look, they like Leonard Skinner and they listen yes. to Jordan Track. I'm like, yes, I see that. Thank you. It's um, the great problem of the reboot. Yes. Is that they're, they're, they're trying to remake it, and they're like, we want to get it back to, like, the flesh. We want it well, to be realistic. We want Not even realistic stuff, but, I'm gonna but they, say, they want you to feel it. This it's is all the thing, fucking facade. Right. But this is but the thing cares? that the reboot doesn't do. And this is the thing the reboot, like, misses from the very beginning for me. And it was like, I mean, last night, like, I was watching it last night with, like, Andrea. And Andrea doesn't watch these a lot with me because she doesn't watch October movies a lot with me. But she was watching it with me, and... I was like, see, this is the problem right here is I've already checked out is the Texas Chains, the first Texas Chainsaw Massacre movie. There's that there's that fucking card that just the crawl that gives you every all the information you need to know. There's no visuals attached to it. You have no idea what's about to come. And that was that is like the hallmark. And like, right. That's the, like, that's the thing that makes it scary is when you just but see words. The problem whoa, is fucking crazy is that this is the fifth time we're doing it. Right. Hang on. They I'm do not, not have that that sleeper agent ability. Right. So before you cut me off, though, this is what I'm getting. At. Oh, that's here the we benefit. go. That's Freebird the benefit. Sucks. Don't step on Diva Dino's toe. Here we go. That's, that's the it. benefit of the first it's one. The October that kills because us. you don't know what's coming. <laughs> and like we've talked about every single day this week, however we've scheduled yeah. this at this point. time is a flat circle, as we learned in part four. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. It doesn't really matter. But like, we normally get movies. From this from this series 
like subsequently, we have no idea what's about to happen. Like we they go get weird that are just bizarre. Yeah. That's fine. I don't give a shit about that. That's cool. Like do that. The reboot, which is supposed to be sort of an identical story to pretty much an identical story of the original. Right. It starts with these visual motifs, which is basically like police footage and that kind of shit. Mm. From the jump for me, that is just like, it's automatically, I don't need, like, it's a reboot. I know what I'm expecting. I know I'm going to see Leatherface. I know I'm going to see some carnage. I get it. I think that's like showing your, I, for me, it was showing the hand up front. It did not work. And automatically, yeah. I was kind of like, I'm not sure I'm into this. I, I, I don't feel that way, person. Because to me, they're showing you that this one, because because famously, Texas Chainsaw is not a very gory movie. Everyone no. thinks it's insanely gory, but almost never does it show us the brutal. No, it's like, just weird. Yeah, because they there was a lot of beautiful filmmaking, and that you see the hook, you see the back, you see her down. You don't see the hook driving into her back, right? You don't no. see Franklin's, you know, guts exploding everywhere, whatever. Close up on the chainsaw. This mm-hmm. one's letting us know it's going to be a little dirtier, more salmonella, right? Bring your fucking bacterial wipes. This is going to be a gross movie. <laughs> They're setting yeah. it up with the flavor because, again, they can't fucking do the leather face surprise reveal. Right. So they're showing us what it's going to look like. And I actually think like, if you watch the opening of the movie, mm-hmm. this hitchhiker scene is way better than the original hitchhiker scene. Well, it's yeah. just awesome. So her mm-hmm. having they you know they're fighting about the whole thing with like they're gonna bring back like twenty pounds of weed is pretty stupid or two pounds of weed, sorry yeah, not that 20, one I was like twenty like pounds her, of weed is a fucking two pounds of weed. I think it's one of those funny things that now just hasn't aged well because it's just like who gives a shit anymore because <laughs> that yeah, that was my like sure. that's my first point that was my first thing it was like who gives a shit about them bringing weed back from Mexico and I was like oh it's two thousand three it's still like a bad thing got it oh if you did but, that right now today that's like federal crime right so. It's weed. Like yeah. it's also well, one of those things. Now you want to go to Mexico, you just go to any of the states right. that have you just it. Go but literally down the street. If you to cross a the border, that's a federal crime. So they're not geniuses right. anyway. Right. Uh, right. They're kind of annoying, but then they. they it's sort of this hit weird this like subplot fighting, that never right? manifests. Yeah. It, it's the only thing is it gives Arlie Emery a reason to be crazy. But we're like that scene before where he's playing with the body. We've already tapped that vein. It's clearly um, crazy. But yeah, so they pick this girl up. She's fucking, she looks like a survivor of Leatherface. Something that we recognize from the first one, right? Mm -hmm. That now she's the last girl who's looking to get in a car. And she starts having a panic attack, right? You're going the wrong way. I won't go back there. Right, right. There's blood on her leg. She pulls a gun out of her vagina. Which is definitely an aesthetic. You're all going to die. Blam. And then they do this amazing pullback. My favorite shot in the movie. Through the mannequin. Bar none. So she so blows cool. the back of her head off, and the camera goes through the back of her head, and her head tilts back. Yep. They're letting awesome. us know. They're like, this. Awesome. It, it, that captures. I was like, all right, if this is the fucking movie, these kind of twist on the original, really, because that that shot, right? That shot's a great microcosm. That that is an artistic choice you're making. That is telling us that this movie is going to be facade and carnival trick. Sure. There's no one who does that <laughs> on any like artistic level. Like I am within the mind of someone who was at a point where they broke and hurt themselves. That's that's goofy. It's a fucking goofball shot that pulls us out of the experience and, and reminds us we're at a haunted house. Right. But we love it. We're whore fans. We know what we're here for. You're not going to subvert us. So that shot is a nice. Oh, this is a little different. It's more mm-hmm. than just throwing entrails on the back window yeah. and i think when the movie's doing stuff like that that's where it finds its sweet spot i agree i think those those kinds of things this is what it's doing like akin to the breakfast club poster yeah of its own making which is yeah when you're doing stuff like that more in the vein of like what filmmaking is at that time like i think this is the kind of this is the kind of hard part about the Texas Chainsaw Mask because you're right. Like everything is just in the shadow of that first one because it is just this phenomenal shift mm-hmm. in filmmaking for the genre overall. Like, and it's undisputed, it's unmatched. Like, you can't do it. And like every subsequent sequel has that problem of just like, what yeah. do you think, Daddy? Not good enough. Meh. So, but there are people like Darcy watching. the male girl says this is her favorite. Like there is a there's a contingent of Texas Chainsaw fans 
This is how I mean, they like to you watch can that like movie. This. It's fine to like this movie. I don't think that's a bad thing. I, and again, it has like its charms. I think if this isn't the second best Texas Chainsaw, it's third. Like it's right in the top of the group. I would sure. Say. I think in I think for me, I just and I can tell like for me the thing that is always just going to knock it down a peg is I just that aesthetic of trying to like. It's the art direction of this. Like, it's everything is placed where it's placed. Like, it's weird for weird. There's a lot of things in here that make you think that it's weird on purpose. And well, for me, yeah, a, a lot of the time film like, is never going to capture that independent yeah, like, nature of the first one. Dimension films, Platinum Dunes producing this is like, I get it. Yes, there's a lot of money. It looks exactly this. like all of those. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so they all have this like very specific veneer over it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but also does like like you were saying, like that specific shot, which takes you out of it and tells you you're on like a haunted house thing. Same thing for the aesthetic overall of like how it's shot, how it looks, is I'm constantly kind of like taken out of like, got it. It's definitely 2003. Not just because these whites look very handsome but also because i have to just like i have to like try to pull out what i'm expecting from like 73 texas which is supposed to be dirt and grime and it's like yes there's dirt and grime but it's very specifically placed and it's very specifically art directed right on top of that thing over there right. not a bad thing just a very hard thing to overcome in my brain personally right but every sequel has had that for the most part right they've never again captured that I mean, they Real all look, vibe. for me, up to this point, they all look trashy in their own way, which is fine. Like, I don't have a problem with that. Well, it's, two, this yeah, has two's that like studio a cartoon, veneer. so it has this, like, goofy layer on it. Yeah. Three was, like, the first, like, oh, this has, like, a real studio shooting vibe. And then part four was trashy in what it was showing, but it showed part everything four pretty has crystal this, like, clear. Made, part four has, like, a, like, shot in the 90s look like i think this is like a really yeah. important thing like again texas chainsaw has never like had to stick with an aesthetic it's just shifted with the times and because right. it has to and that's fine i don't have but, a problem with that like at there all. are things right like in a prime example they're at the gas station she knows how to pick locks and hot wires car because she had brothers and was in juvie all right fair right. enough Cool. Even the toilets in this movie have to look like a crime scene, right? Like that outhouse is like, <laughs> yeah. you smell it immediately. You get yeah. it. So even though you're like, that is a prop toilet, of there's course. no authenticity in it. Again, yeah. I, I, this movie is reminding us from the moment that head gets blown out shot, right? Even the police footage doesn't look like real police. Authenticity. Footage, right? That's a good word they're, for they're, it. That's they don't what it need is. authenticity. They're reminding right. us you're in the haunted. Like when I go into... Like, my hometown had this famous thing, the Pythian House, right? Mm -hmm. It was this old Victorian mansion that every year would become this insanely popular haunted house. You'd wait, like, hours to get into it. Nothing in that house had any authenticity. Right. Right? You'd, like, hear the fucking, you know, divorced uncle down the road fucking having, like, a heart attack before he came out to scare. He wasn't able to catch his breath in time. Right, right. But the anticipation of what they were doing and us willingly buying in that's why these mm -hmm. things work absolutely and again i think the movie does a good job of letting us know that tonal shift so like when we see leatherface for the first time they're not going to get us again with that you know opening the door slamming the door the immediate thud yeah. he cracks eric balfour with the hammer awesome drags him in and we're yep. like so it's not they they, it's they change our perception a hair of where it happens Mm -hmm. We see him dragging, but you see big, hulking guy. You see some of the mask, and now he's got Robert Smith hair, and you're like, all right. <laughs> like, I'm I'm into yeah. that. Like, that, that's fine. It's close enough. But then we take Balfour down in the basement. We immediately see him getting into the mask. And, like, when he startles them in the van, mm -hmm. and he's wearing the Eric Balfour mask, awesome. Yeah. Like, that's a great fucking addition that he immediately is wearing the mask of one of the victim's friends so that now there is this extra layer yeah. of what there's he's an extra doing. game to play. Because yeah. either, yeah, he thinks that will draw them closer or he's rubbing their face in the cart. Like, there's something extra going on so that those kind of moments are fucking awesome. Like, does the hillbilly grandson with the worst prosthetic teeth do anything for me? 
No, because no. he was the kid from the ring. And I'm like, why are his teeth like that? Why are his teeth? Like, they do that exact scene in A Christmas Story, right? Where they put those things in. It's like, look at my teeth. I was like, why did they make those his teeth? But yeah. he still sounds like he's, like, reading them hillbilly shit from an encyclopedia. It's like, that kid didn't work at all. Right. But Arlie Emery rolling up and saying, mm, what y'all been doing with this course? And grabbing tits and touching wet spots. you put Arlie Ermey pretty much anything. Arlie Ermey crushes. Perfect. Whatever they did to his eyebrows, that worked for me too. That could have been all. He had those Bobby <laughs> Knight, like, I don't have time to handle my eyebrows thing. Don't you hope that's just him? I did. <laughs> I would bet 90% they were not fucking adding eyelash, eyebrow extensions. I'm guessing that's not a market. What the hell are you doing? I think that's just, yeah, old man who's like, he fucking took my country and his eyebrows are just rebelling. <laughs> his eyebrows are their own little insurrectionist, right? right <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, going yeah, wherever they sure. want. I won't be controlled! Yeah. They were definitely yeah. in January 6th, for yeah. sure. I'm going to drop my kid off at school with all these Semper Fi stickers. I'll not be a part of your <sighs> your socialist system while I drop my kid. Neither, neither, neither. We don't need to do all that. But him walking oh, in, right? And him kind of impression. defiling the corpse. Mm -hmm. Right? But he still has this, like, and this is something I think the movie does really well, too, is he has, he's a law officer now, right? Not just a guy who's like a barbecue shack connoisseur. Yeah, yeah. So there's this extra cool reinforcing of he represents a power structure and that there's this cool moment in the film where the kids don't realize that they've entered a world that doesn't have rules. Right. And so there's kind of a fun give or take with that when he's like wrapping that woman's head in saran wrap and they're like moving her to the trunk. Like that's a really good horror movie scene. It's it's repulsive. But it makes sense. You're like, yeah, if I was there, I'd do what the cops said because I've got fucking weed in the car. And there, there's something about the degradation yeah. of the body. Because this movie essentially strips cannibalism all the way out of the movie. Yeah. But there still is this, like, lack of respect for the flesh. I don't know. Like, like that scene to me, you get a handful of those scenes. Yeah. You, you, I think there's, like, leather five face spots. works. There, there's, like, good stuff in this one. I think. I think there's like five or six spots in this movie that work. I think for me overall, it's sort of just, and it could be, <laughs> we've been doing this for five years now. Perhaps I am just desensitized at this point of watching these back to back where I'm like, yeah, yeah I get it. Great. Thank you. But well, the Texas chainsaws too, don't do a great job of adding like mythology or building no. upon each other. I, so it's almost I, like you're constantly resetting into the same movie. Cause I remember the first time, like I remember seeing this in the theaters when I was, See, oh, me and my it. friends fucking loved this when we came out of the theater. I can't remember. How, I can't remember how old. If I was, this was 2003, I mean, I guess I was. I was like I, a I sophomore saw, at Ball State, so you were probably like senior. In yeah, high so I was like a senior, like a junior or senior in high school. So like it was one of those things where I remember going to the theater to see this with a friend because this was, again, not my vibe. But yeah. everyone wanted to go see Texas Chainsaw. I'm like, All right, I'll go see it Texas was Chainsaw our Master. chance to see the Texas Chainsaw Massacre in theaters. Yeah. And I remember I remember being scared because, again, it just wasn't my vibe at that point. Yeah. Watching it now, again, it is just one of those things with really hard yeah. to like, extrapolate out that veneer of 2003 <laughs> filming. It but it has was not uh, it has not aged. It's just the way that well. it's shot. And it's not, it's not even a bad that it's, thing. It's aged poorly. Like I can't watch I don't it anymore. Think it's because aged poorly at the all. Thing it's is, just I left the theater and fucking vibe. loved it. I think I've aged poorly. Clearly, as you can see, if you're on YouTube, Phil Malcolmus, um, you can see how poorly we're aging. Teenage Griff fucking loved this. I was like, this mm -hmm. is a fucking. I still think it's one of the better reboots of the like major franchises that have rebooted. I really like this one. Yeah. There, to me, the the thing that I would say, like, if there's something that doesn't work in the movie, right? It is. I actually wrote a note that I know you specifically will appreciate. Do you remember the Van Helsing movie with Hugh Jackman? I do. And that movie had a weird kink, which was every character would swing in on ropes. Yeah. There's like 55 unnecessary a rope, rope swings. A lot of rope stunts. I said, this uh, Van Helsing is to ropes what the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is to unnecessary sparks flying. Right? <laughs> That this movie loves for him to chainsaw things that are not made of wood and flesh yes. so that sparks go flying everywhere. Yeah, absolutely. And I was like, it gave me this Van helsing -y feeling. So it's like that. There and then is... the long bit at the end where Jessica Beale's running and she's like, she's in the meatpacking plant. Yeah. And she's inside of a torso of a cow. And I'm like, that's awesome. 
They're Very clearly cool. trying to show like the tits and like the freezing air to get us all whatever. But I was like, all right, if he attacks, he starts randomly cutting cows or something. No, he just presses a button and then she runs again. And she runs again. And she run like the running does nothing for me in this, right? The segments yeah. though where you're with the new Sawyer family, you're with the big ass giant le- like the Leatherface's basement in this is fucking pretty cool. horrifying. Oh, it's because this thing, they're not cannibals now. Now it's like a weird museum. They're just like weird fetish people. It's like, like that weird just, museum, yeah, on Sunset yeah, just like, where it's like, do you want to see like a baby with two heads? You're like, maybe. Yeah, it's like this weird like homunculus museum where they just keep like that. And then the I'll tell you what, my He's favorite He's really just is, trying shit out. Yeah. My favorite is um, when she finally, so when she gets thrown down there by Leatherface and because she finds Mike Vogel's character. Yeah. Uh, oh, strung dude, up. how about him getting his leg chopped off amongst awesome. the flowing white curtains? Fucking, that is actually that one of my favorite. Awesome. That might be my favorite, like, visual motif is, like, amongst the sheets. Well, it's also because cool. I was like, how many fucking sheets do they have? So it gives it, like, this ethereal surreal like are we in like a his mind because he's so scared it's just cool and then the blood so, on the shit that scene is awesome so b- my favorite like little visual tick though that they have in the basement because again that basement is a fucking horror show is the, worst. the fingers in the clarinet case was like that is fucking rad dude there's that's, nothing that's cooler when the than extra that art here. department is like yeah this is not realism this is fun that's the that's when the art department yeah. like who has the best little like it was like right. a competition between all the props people right because this is how i distinguish the that. two thousands right like some of the saw movies were not fun right hostile got to the point where it's like it's fun if you find fun in like just it's almost like a roller coaster fun right like we're gonna try to make you puke do you think that's fun this one while it has the visuals of a torture porn genre film it's not it's fun in a traditional haunted house monster movie way like that scene the scene that's like the closest that would make everyone be like this is torture porn is when he's on the meat hook and she's mm-hmm. like, I'll lift your one leg. And he's like, fucking stop. She's like, do a CrossFit pull up and like hump your way off the hook. And when he sags back on the hook, Ugh. it's, Ugh. oh man, like that to this day, like I, every time I watch this movie, I like am remembering that scene. I'm like, oh God, I, I don't want to see that. That and when Leatherface salts his wound, I'm like, that is fucking gnarly. But awesome. But, but awesome. very cool. So that's it. I, I see. I love a lot of that shit, dude. I think that's that, about as torture porny as I'm willing to go. Let's stop here and just do it. What did you think of Leatherface? This version of Leatherface. Okay, so this is Andrew Brniarski, who I only know from uh, not just the pro. So the program is probably the thing he's most famous for. But I remember him best from uh, Any Given Sunday. Um, he's great. Great Leatherface. Like, I, I think he's awesome. Honestly. Yeah. Like, he is, like, not wailing, which is probably the only thing you need to do to improve upon the last one, because <laughs> that was just got a little there, obnoxious. There was a chance they could have fucking pulled that off, dude. There was, but it, they didn't. Uh, but, but, you yeah, know, they, like, I mean, they didn't. They didn't. And if you <laughs> like him in this movie, all. I think What's I that? could make a case the next movie, Tex Chainsaw Massacre, New Beginnings. Mm-hmm. He's back as Leatherface. He's, and it's a I weird one. He's so fucking good in the next movie i just think he's like that might be my favorite leather face in the series but like i like the leather face that is like built like a brick shit house that's just like oh dude he's huge because this is the thing at this just, time we already had had kane versus the undertaker which is like one yeah, of the yeah. seminal things of my childhood oh, was yeah, that absolutely. wrestling storytelling i was like this is the greatest thing of my it life was awesome it was, it was awesome. giant horror movie monsters fighting each other right he's in that vibe Right, like he could have come out yeah, at the end of that story, totally. and it's like, it's their long lost cousin Thomas Hewitt. Really, makes total sense. And you'd be Great. like, yeah, fuck yeah, he looks exactly yeah, like he should be in that ring with those behemoths. Yeah. I, I don't mind at all. Giant Leatherface, right? I Again, it's it's that. another version of facade, right? Where the first guy's just like a, a normal, like big hefty boy, right? Gunner Hansen. Mm-hmm. He's just a big normal he- hefty boy. Now we're getting to where, like, even Leatherface is, like, full of facade because he's fucking humongous. Yeah. I but like I'll the... tell you this. There's a fucking scene in the movie, and I was like, I fucking love that scene. I love when he's working hard making his fucking, like, his toe collection. Like, they're pet rocks you'd buy at a hippie <laughs> festival or whatever. <laughs> making his Balfour mask. He peels his mask off. Yeah. And he's just kind of this sweaty, you know, scraggly-haired guy. 
who has no nose. And it's not like the thing pushes in like it's a monster reveal. Yeah. He just sits there and kind of looks up at the small little beam of light, the shaft of light from the, the basement window. And he just does a... Like he can breathe again because he has his mask off, right? There, it's such a small moment. And maybe I'm desperately looking for something to like film school about. But I, I found a lot of pathos in that moment. I think if you find a little, I think for. He's a guy to, who's just doing his work. Right. I think for it to get 30 years later, it's okay to improve upon the Leatherface, especially after the last one, and give him a little pathos. Because the last one was cool part where four, we did this. If he had had moments like that, part yeah. four's Leatherface could have been the best. Rather than just putting this lipstick on, this yeah. one was like again. I like I like that a lot. Like I, I, it was I think great. It's, I think it's cool, man. It's yeah. a cool visual motif. Again, like everything in this movie does something right. It's just a two thousand three movie. So eventually, you're like, I get it. But I really do like like I I love this Leatherface. Like he's fucking awesome. This this even is the, one of the best Leatherface. Off. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. he's fucking great as Leatherface. Like, even the scene, right? So the little fucking Chompers, right? Whatever the fucking grandkid's name is, Chompers. He's trying to free Jessica Beale and them, right? And they're running. They're running. They're running. When Leatherface goes to get them as the stairs are breaking, he doesn't even for half a second touch the grandson, acknowledge the grandson, threaten him. Because the no. kid's like, go, oh, leave me. So that's another moment where the movie tells us that kid feels no fear from one of the scariest looking people we've ever seen in a movie. Right. Right. So there's some kind of Uncle Leatherface is a good guy. Uncle Leather. Right. He just, you know, he's got this problem. You know, like we'd say about like when your uncle who gambles too much comes to Thanksgiving and your dad's yeah. like, I know he's going to ask me for a hundred bucks. I know it. I know it. Uh, that's who Leatherface is to that kid. And that is just one of those choices that adds to what you're doing, even on a small level, it adds to Leatherface's mythos, right? And then Absolutely. from there, from there, we get into the kind of like he's breaking through the wall to get Jessica Beale. He's hanging the nerd on the chandelier and cutting him balls up, which was great. Fucking awesome. love that. Awesome. But you're like, then we get into a little bit more of him kind of like running around shit, like the running once and the he's chasing, like, and it's like, all right. Once he's not dominating, like. Once it's just becoming this like hide and seek thing, that yeah, like that whole sequence, I'm just like, I well, don't it also kind of misses like the coolest thing is like we want them to stay closer to the Sawyer house. Yeah, well, this, and I this also think mirror like, of a, of a real the, life. Yeah, I also think the house, like the family and all that stuff, is a mist. Like, I think most because like Arlie you can't. Ernie can't was lightning. awesome. You can't capture lightning in a bottle twice. I get it. Like, no, I, no, no. I don't know. Yeah. The, 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 Arlie the, Ernie's a great addition. The uncle and the aunt who live in the house or the mom, they're terrible. Like, yeah, they, they offer nothing to this well, movie like, other than, like, you bitch. That thing, the whole concept of, like, this is something I did not like, actually. Because this is that, like, tor I don't think, I don't really like the torture porn stuff. Like, it doesn't really do much for me. This is like mentally torture, like a mental torture porn aesthetic of like this, that one, the girl who blows her brains out in the beginning, they come to the, like Jessica Biel's character comes to the conclusion, this baby that there is this baby that they find is like her baby. Okay. And they basically took the baby. So that trailer, I was going to say, that's where they fucking crushed on casting. The mom, the lady, the, the big lady. And the yeah. little uh, Rosemary's not baby, right? Yeah, Whatever yeah, those yeah. two are. No, no, they were great. They were awesome. Pitch she gets to that trailer, and they have some lines I love where it's like, oh, that sweet boy, he knows not to come around here and mess around. And yeah. so then you're like, oh, fuck. Like, it's weird. It's, other faces it's a, it's a sweet good. boy. Are they in on it? You know she shouldn't be drinking the tea. But when mm -hmm. she's like, "That's that ain't your baby, it is my baby. It's like <laughs> baby Billy from... <laughs> Right, I'm your daddy. You ain't my fucking daddy. You ain't I'm your daddy. Hush. Yeah. Yeah. You ain't my fucking daddy. Uh, I think but it's that scene is awesome because again, awesome scene. You feel like you know there's no respite for Jessica Biel, right? They do the classic. She runs out to the highway and a car goes around her. Right. This is mm -hmm. not going to be like part one where a trucker is going to stop and do battle for you. Even when the trucker eventually does stop, he goes, 
hey, this is insane. I'm not getting overtime and pushes her out of the car. Get this. Yeah, get the yeah. fuck out of the cab. I got a fucking normal life. I don't want any part of this. So when she goes to that trailer, we know that no good is going to happen. But the the scene work, the scene building of that, I really liked. It's visually like this nice little lost in the 50s kind of trailer. They do the thing where like everyone in this movie, anytime they show a fridge or an appliance, it's like appalling. That can of beans yeah. is like horrifying. Equally as scary as Leatherface or whoever designed those prosthetic teeth. <laughs> yeah. um, but I love that scene. It's this little respite where we're paused. We're not doing Leatherface running and screaming with a chainsaw. But we know there still is much danger. It's a, it's it's a good awesome. scene. My only problem and then is... You, yeah, the hard cut is like uh, uh, Arlie Ermy just fucking dumping bear on her. Hey, what's up? You're back with what's me. Up? And we're like, wake no! up. Like, oh, man. <laughs> That's not my what bigger, I want to wake up to. I think my bigger problem, though, is the... Uh, I don't think the kid thing adds a whole lot. Like, there is no ad- additional hint of danger other than just like... It's like a hat on a hat. Like it it does not adds work. one thing which we've been debating in the franchise, which is how are they getting more Sawyers? I know she says something uh, about them fucking each other as cousins, right? And he's like, you bitch, you yeah. goddamn bitch, how dare you impugn our, our life that clearly has no fucking cracks in it? How dare you? We don't have a glass house. This is a perfect life. What are you talking about? Right. And she says something, she's like, you just fuck your cousins you like? And he's like, you goddamn bitch. And he's freaking the fuck out. I was like, Come on, dude. That's everyone's first question. Everyone who comes to visit you, every pizza on, delivery man. guy's like, you guys fucking. I, you guys, you, I know what's yeah. going on here. How comes yeah. you're all the same age, but one of you's mama and one of you's not? What's happening here? What's going on? Hmm? Come on. Hmm? Admit it. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Be real. I know it's not. There are three things you don't talk about at dinner. Politics, religion, and who fucks whose cousins. Who fucks I get whose it. cousin? I get the societal rules, but you guys said the societal rules stop at the property line. Here's you your extra that. large ham and pineapple. Yeah. Just tell me the truth. You know. Yeah, you fuck your cousins and then put pictures of them in jars full of water. You're doing this. You you <laughs> ask the questions. You laid it out like it's an escape room. I have to ask the question. You, don't, you did what that. What am I supposed to do? Just sit here and not ask the question? Yeah, you, <laughs> See, that's the movie we need. We need we need the movie about the pizza need, guy yeah, dropping off need, pizza. We need to the fucking hillbilly house. Tim Curry to walk in and just expound theories <laughs> rapidly. <laughs> we need him to bundle the shit out of the end of this. But it's good. I love those people in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the other family. Eh. But it's like, all right. Eh. So if you got three awesome Sawyer family members, and then the grandson fucking sucks. The grandson's like the Jar Jar Binks of this movie, <laughs> right? Sure. The Jar Jar Moeller of this movie. He's fucking trash. Like just a terrible, terrible casting. Terrible prosthetics. Terrible story device. Uh. Like, why would they... If, neither here nor there. Not important, right? I just think uh, inserting children yeah. into this story the is mom, such a the strange... The mom and Uncle Melvin or whatever, they, they mm-hmm. offer nothing to the movie. They're fucking zeros. Not even like they're bad. They just don't do anything. They have yeah. no value to the film whatsoever. But then you get, you know, the ladies in the trailer, Leatherface and uh, Ermy, and you're like, all right, good deal. That's over half. I'll take that. Right? And so... I think that's the problem is like, then it just starts to descend. We kind of get away from the madness of in the house. We do a lot of running, a lot yeah. of fucking Once running. Once we get out of the house, you're just like, yeah. wait, the movie's not over yet. I actually remember pausing and be like, this has got to be it, right? Like she like cuts his arm off and that's the end of the story. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, there is 20 more minutes of this movie. Holy shit. Yeah, what is happening? I was like, what <laughs> else do we have? What we, we let's see, we have chainsaws. There's been a massacre. We're in Texas. I think we've covered everything. What else could possibly be left in this film? And what the fuck is happening? Yeah, it's <laughs> what uh, the fuck else do we have to talk about? It's they do a thing where it's like she steals the baby back. She you runs know, over Arlie. Er- that's a pretty good scene, right? Where there's like the that's she's cool. In, like, she's in a different car, not the semi. Yeah, I mean, all right. Backing over Arlie Ermy yeah. like four times. I'm like, dude, I would have. We see the, the nightmare of, of how parents used to drive us around in that era with nothing. Yeah, no car seat. Like if you hit the brakes too hard, that kid's neck is snapped and dead. Yeah, like that kid maybe is in the, the front. That kid's in the front better. seat with no seat belt, like sitting Sideways. in a blanket. I'm like, yeah. that kid seems yeah. unsafe. Can, can we turn honest. that kid to camera? Uh, no, every parent's gonna fucking freak out in the audience. No, turn him to camera. Turn him right. to camera, please. Um, Jesus, oh, H. All right. Yeah. 
That's I fine. If that's you want to be mopping up popcorn vomit, that's on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not here to tell you how to do anything, apparently. Listen, um, all we've had at Crafty all day yeah. is, you know, granola oh, bars. Oh, well, we get sure, that whatever. one last... Uh, <laughs> I mean, they didn't even have chocolate chips. They are just oats. Who wants They're just it? oats. But no, but, they had yeah. the uh, one last leather face where he, like, drags the chainsaw in the car. <laughs> when he does that, she does... Whatever maneuver she does, that baby's neck snaps and is dead. God, dead. And There's then she no has a throwback to where Balfour's like, she's dead, baby. It doesn't matter what we do. Where she slowly rolls that little circle seat out of the car. <laughs> And she's like, I'm Balfour now, too. Leatherface was Balfour, and I'm Balfour. Oh, no. Flesh and spirit made one. I'm Leatherface. That's You were that's really pulling right. this one. That's nice, what I was nice, writing in my head. Nicely done. You're welcome. I'm and just glad we got, we get, we I'm just glad we got one more chainsaw. Ring, yeah. Ring, ring. yeah. One more Van Helsing-style spark shower. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, then we end with the cops back, right? Okay. And what then the fuck? The, the images, the frozen images, as you imagine, like America seeing like Geraldo doing, and this is the last known image. And this of is the last time That's anyone awesome. saw me open we anything. We did actually uncovered. forget a gigantic thing the movie did. What? Which is she fucking cuts Leatherface's arm off. Yeah. We totally glossed over the fact that she just chops his arm well, off. Because he's, okay, th- th- I'll tell you why. This is why. Because well, also we never see a fucking hook-handed Leatherface again. Because he, she like chops his arm off, and he still is able to come out and Van Helsing the fucking yeah. fucking car. Like he's fine, he'll be fine. It'll grow back. <laughs> Did Frankenstein lose an arm? Is this just Van Helsing? Is this just white trash Van Helsing? <laughs> well, you're just sitting there. You're like, I felt like Van back. Helsing was white trash Van Helsing because you only would find it at Walmart bins now. <laughs> so is this Maybe. is this a a trucker hat on top of a MAGA hat? Are we already? <laughs> I think it's a. I think it's a. I think it's a. Van Jessica Helsing Biel is ha- the John Deere, where it's like a respectable white trash hat. I think it's a. I think it's a Jessica Biel cowboy hat on top oh, nice. of a Van Helsing well, stunt no, no, no. team hat. Let's call that what it is. That's a Brett Michaels cowboy hat. Uh, thank you. <laughs> on Rock of I Love. Think, <laughs> I think there's the. I think the bottom. So if we're doing a hat on a hat analogy, it's the Brett Michaels hat. And then on top of that is the Van Helsing stunt team hat, and that's mm-hmm. that's your movie right there. Yeah, that makes sense. I, the so I, I do like you know the frame flicker at the end. That's pretty cool. However, if this is like discovered footage, and they're like so no one's caught him yet, I'm like, how did they not Waco this house? Like fucking the entire Texas For SWAT sure, team shows up once the cops realize that cops have been killed. Come on. For sure, they're breaking every constitutional protection Absolutely. known to man after that. You're telling me this they house David- is destroyed. Yeah, this yeah. would be like they would have been like, remember David Koresh? Let's just make this ten times worse. Yeah. Like, all right, cool, that's the end of it. No, no, no. That's one thing the cops do not tolerate. <laughs> that's is one the thing the cops are not cops. tolerating yeah. in Texas is whoa, two cops Especially got murdered. Texas let's burn cops. these fuckers yeah. out. No way, dude. They're all, they like hear a bat signal. They're all on their fucking horses yeah. and dune buggies there right are, over their media. You're telling me like no one ever found these cops again. I was like, cool. Yeah. Why is the house still standing? And How the there six any possibility? foot, ten, one armed leather face sunk into the bed. How is there background? any Wait, possibility what? that this case remains unsolved given that two police officers were murdered in the process of investigating it? <laughs> uh, Everyone knows what I want to say here, but I'm not going to say it. We all we all know why it remains. We all, we, up. We, we, we all know what's gonna happen. We all know what's going on. I, I, let's just say he was putting on Eric Belfour mask. <laughs> we all know how he got away. <laughs> we all know. It was fine. We could just we, we'll leave we, it out there. <laughs> we'll just leave it there. We all know. That's yeah. This this movie secret. is like you know they don't remind us they're cannibals. We just know. <laughs> you don't have to tell me that Freddy Krueger fucked kids. I know. Yeah, I know. Again, it's a hat on a hat. Again, it's it's. <laughs> Well made, <laughs> Leatherface fucking rules. The cast is super hot. Some of the family's really good. This movie, this is how I judge most Texas Chainsaw Massacres: is is there just more shit I like than shit that I don't? Yeah, that's and that's this a good one way to passes judge it. that test by a lot. Yeah, right. Like two and four, I'm not always sure that that equation's good. Part three, Leatherface in this. There's more that I like than I don't. And again, I think this is probably the second best movie in the franchise 
it does a good job. I'll of have not... to do my rankings and see where I actually yeah. think it all lands, but it's definitely in the top couple Texas Chainsaw movies. It does a good job of not trying to reinvent the wheel or do anything that is gonna be like, oh, you know what? Be you know what? I want to take this classic piece of cinema. I bet I can do it better. Like it's just we're gonna reboot this, and then you know, right? There's some stuff we're gonna this have to change because it's same, 2003. Like, cool. Is, yeah, it's the same as going to Halloween Horror Nights version of texas chainsaw massacre that's a great way to put it yes yeah and we all love that we'd all sign up to buy that ticket for sure yeah who wouldn't go in that haunted house i guess that's it for the texas chainsaw massacre reboot i hope you enjoyed it as much as we did uh we'll be back tomorrow with texas chainsaw massacre a new beginning which should have been called a new new beginning i guess this is a prequel to the movie that we just discussed so we see uh Leatherface in his experimental artist phase. Arlie Ermy back. His blue period. Yeah. More hots were back in. Jordana Brewster and Matt Bomer both went on to be icon hot people. Awesome. Um, but yeah, so we'll be back tomorrow for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. New beginning. We're moving rapidly through the Texas Chainsaws. The next franchise up, all of Phantasm with our friend and guest host Carmelita Valdez McCoy. Uh, and then after that, Alex and I will be back to finish Scream 5 and 6. Mm-hmm. So stay ahead of us. If you guys want the uh, the schedule, it's on all of our socials. You can email the show, filmalchemistpod at gmail.com if you can't find it. Uh, also, a great way to know everything about the show, support the show, have authorship of the show. Go to patreon.com slash filmalchemistpod uh, to make this show exactly what you want it to be, what you need it to be. We appreciate you guys. We love you for doing all of this October madness with us. You guys us. are great. We'll be back tomorrow for another Texas Chainsaw Massacre because we just can't get enough of them. We just can't. We're glad this case remains. They're delight. So that's it for us, the Film Alchemist. I'm Josh Griffey. I'm Alex Tiatino. We'll see you tomorrow. You're telling me the state police just wiped their hands of this? We're like, man, eh, it's fine. Yes, I'm telling <laughs> you the state police just whited their hand. I mean, wiped their hands. <laughs> <laughs>